going to be talking about today is um, the ISO standard, ISO 55000. So first presentation we talked about what's happening. My part of the presentation is going to be here's a potential solution to help us get there. So one thing I just want to start out with is the ISO 55000 standard is a management standard for asset management. It isn't a panacea. It isn't going to be the cure for everything. It's just a way to group activities together uh, for asset management. It's not a technical standard, and it's not specific to any organization or group. Um, we'll get into that where some groups have gone and have started taking the asset management standard as a baseline for industry-specific standards, but this is kind of an umbrella standard. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about ISO, the ISO 55000 standard, and the future moving forward. First is ISO, and what is ISO? We talked about different organizations, and we have a whole bunch of standards organizations. We have ASME, we have uh, ANSI, uh, ASHRAE, a whole bunch of standards bodies. Now, looking uh, forward, we also have uh, energy management standards. We have safety management standards, um, risk management standards. We have all different types of standards uh, for ISO, and they're internationally recognized because it was developed for internet or using an international uh, basis in international experts to develop. If you look at the ISO management standards, they all look alike. And there's a reason for that. They all follow the same template. When you develop a management system standard, um, ISO has a template called Annex SL, which is, OK, for any management system, you have these elements that you have to include. Now, you can go and modify the language to whatever topic you're going to, but you can't take anything out. And that gives alignment. So if a, a company or an organization goes through and certifies or complies with an ISO 9000 standard or 9001 standard, they can easily comply with an asset management system standard um, if they choose to do so because they align. Once you understand what your organization does and who your stakeholders are, you really need a commitment from leadership to follow through on anything, whether it's asset management, quality management, just delivery of, uh, of services and goods. But once management knows what the organizational context is, you can start developing plans and policies to implement a management system plan. So planning. Now that you know what your organization does, you have your management commitment, you have to plan. And uh, I had a conversation earlier with uh, one of our colleagues. Is everybody familiar with the 7P principle? You know, think about if you just applied the 7P principle to most of your life, how much better it would be. If you just planned out, you know, different things like, geez, I should have mowed my lawn before the snow came. It would make it so much better the next year. But when we go into planning, there's a, a big piece of planning. You know, we need to do things, but we need to do things in the context of risk. If, if you talk about risk, it's, it's very benign in the actual definition. It's really just a change from the normal. But when you say, oh, there's a risk involved here, what's everybody think about? Something bad. There's a risk. Oh my goodness, something bad's going to happen. So in the standard, everywhere we put risk was added and opportunity to stress the fact that not all risk is bad. Not all the things that you do for planning to uh, involve risk are bad things. 
If you look at most large corporations, when did they get their start? When did Apple get their start? When did Microsoft get their start? When did Ford get their start? During an economic downturn, they made investments during an economic downturn because they knew eventually things would come back. So they made an investment, and when things came back, their organizations were affected in a very positive manner. So there's a lot of opportunity, you know, risk and reward, risk and opportunity. You have to put the resources in place to implement your plans. It would be really silly to say, hey, I need 10 people to do a job, but then you only have two to do it and expect a, a good outcome. I need a million dollars worth of investment, but my budget is only $5,000. You have to put the resources in place. You have to put the right resources in place. Now, one thing that we added in this section that was different from the Annex SL template was the information requirements. If you think about the information, big data, the Internet of Things, this is an opportunity that we took, that we put this in this standard to take this into account because everybody is going to need data moving forward. And if you don't define what data you need, you may not be able to implement your plans, you may not be able to implement your uh, management system. But again, right, in, if you look at the standard, there's the resource, or I'm sorry, the lead-in, the introduction, there's the management commitment, and now it's the implementation of plans. The last piece of it is operations. We have uh, operation change management. We have outsourcing or we address outsourcing. Um, when you talk about asset management system, even if you outsource portions of your business, it's expected that the people you outsource to will be aligned with your asset management strategy, policy, and plans. Everybody has performance evaluation. Identifying the data up front that you're monitoring goes a long way to measuring that performance. When we talk about cost and value, this is a tricky one because right now, usually we're driven by cost. We're driven by shareholder expectations. I believe, and this is a personal opinion, I believe that although shareholders are extremely important, it will start shifting more to a triple bottom line for organizations and the way they look at things. You can already see it with environmental standards and being environmentally friendly and buying green power and a lot of those things. You can start seeing that a lot of companies are paying more attention to employees and the employee needs. So, Shareholders are very important, but they won't be the most important forever. It started out in the 1980s, the movie Greed. I blame Michael Douglas. But before that, companies were a lot different, and I, I see that they're starting to change that way um, from uh, everything I've heard. So when we talk about cost, cost won't be the only thing that we look at. It'll be value. Sometimes it may cost a little bit, but the long-term value um, will come into importance. And everything that we do now is going to pay off in the future. It's important. It's important for infrastructure. It's important for people's health. What's important for you? How can you align what you do to asset management? Because in the future, we'll all be talking about it. Thank you.